Welcome to Sunday Worship at, from Mount of Olives Church. We are not able to come to you directly. We're not able to be in the worship center at this time, but we are bringing you a worship service where we're going to honor God and hear from him through his word. And so we're gl so glad that you're watching and are part of this today. We uh, want you to know that you can stay in touch with us. If there's prayer requests that you have, you can email us and go to our website, moochurch.org, and find more information. You can stay in touch with us through Facebook and other means, other means of social media. So we hope that you'll stay in touch with us. And if we can be a support to you, pray for you in any way, we want to do that. We also have a communication card online that you can fill out and use. But we also want to encourage you to also continue to give us your financial support. Your financial support is essential at a time like this. Because you see, dear friends, we need to be ready for when this coronavirus is over. We want to be positioned so that we can carry on ministry and not miss a beat. Our, our children in our Sunday school are, are in need of their, they need our support. We need to be able to ramp up right away. Uh, the Rock, in the same way, we need to be able to support our teenagers. We need to be able to, the minute this is over with, continue our support to South County Outreach and to Southwest Community Center. There's so many people that need Mount of Olives Church. And so your financial giving now will make sure that we're positioned to move forward with effective ministry going into the rest of this year. So please give us your support. Please be faithful in your giving. If you'd like to do online giving, you can talk to your bank and they can arrange it, or you can go to our website and uh, give through our website and our automatic means by contacting us. God bless you. Let's continue now and start with our worship hour. Built on nothing less 
and Jesus' blood and righteousness. No merit of my own I claim, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every eye and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood sustain me in the raging flood. When all supports are washed away, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Welcome to our home. I believe this is the first time I've ever brought a message and a sermon from our home, but welcome. We're glad you could join us for this online service uh, as Mount of Olives Church, we gather together. And as leaders of this church, we wanna move forward with, with worship today and hearing God's word, because that's what's gonna give us comfort, that's what's gonna give us peace in this challenging time. And so let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you that we can call on you. We thank you that we're not abandoned to ourselves and left to ourselves, but Lord, you are engaged in this world. You are the down to earth God who became a man in Jesus. And so Lord, you have come to rescue us and to give us hope and to give us peace. So Lord, give us open hearts and open minds to hear from you now through your word in Jesus name, amen. I know many people weeks ago, I'm included, thought when we heard about the coronavirus that it would be no big deal. We thought it would pass. We thought it would go through the population like so many things do and that'd be the end of it. We thought uh, it'd be like the flu. It'd affect a few people, but not like it's affecting everybody now. Now we uh, are in this crisis, a pandemic around the world. Uh, we thought it was no big deal, but it turned into a big deal, didn't it? So now you got to stay home and many people have lost their jobs and you go to the grocery store and there's shelves that are absolutely empty and um, we're so concerned about what the weeks and months ahead will be and so we need to look to God's word because that is where we're going to find hope and you know I've been thinking about these days in which we are living and I as an armchair student of history it seems to me that there's only been a couple other times and in recent history where America has had something similar to deal with. I think back to the Great Depression in the late 1920s and early 30s and uh, the, the stock market crashed just like it's uh, not, not uh, much greater than this one now. And uh, people, millions of people lost their jobs for many years. My mother said uh, 
because she went through the Great Depression, she said you couldn't even buy a job. That was her way of putting it. People went hungry. There were long lines, bread lines and soup lines, and people were starving and, and people were desperate. And that was a, a, a serious time. And I can only think of a time like that when we're dealing with what we're dealing with now. And then I think about World War II, where the United States was attacked at Pearl Harbor. Thousands of sailors and soldiers lost their lives. There was a blackout here on the West Coast. There was rationing all through the nation during, during the war effort. Thousands of soldiers went to Europe and went to the Pacific and fought against tyranny. President Franklin Roosevelt said to the country and to the Congress, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. And I would have to say that applies for us now as well. But those were desperate times and those were difficult times and challenging times. I, I think in my own life, the only thing that comes close is maybe the Cuban Missile Crisis. I remember as a young boy, my father coming home during work hours. He, they sent him home because there was the possibility of war, nuclear war. He said the grocery shelves were empty. People were panicked. Uh, people were scared to death because it looked like we might be at war, a nuclear war. I remember sitting around the television set as we listened to President Kennedy talk about the mitigation efforts that he would take. Well, we made it through those times as a nation and we're doing it again. And so we need to stop and reflect as to what do we do when, when something that's a no big, no big deal becomes a big deal? What is it that we do? Well, it seems to me the first thing we realize is that, that God is not the author of sickness and death. He just is not. He is not the author of sickness and death. When he created the world, he looked at it and said, it is good. It is good. And then he created Adam and Eve, and he created the Garden of Eden and placed them in the Garden of Eden. And they had everything they needed, everything they wanted, and it was good. And then sin came into the world through their rebellion. Sin came into the world, and as a result of sin coming into the world, so did sickness, so did death, so did hatred and war and racial prejudice and disease. And the world became this broken place. And God in his great love for you and me did not abandon us to ourselves, but he came in human flesh in Jesus Christ to rescue us and redeem us from ourselves. And so the first thing we've got to recognize in this crisis is that God is not the author of disease and he's not the author of death. He is the author of life. And we must always be promoting life because God is the author of life. And then we have to resist the temptation to allow our broken condition to overwhelm us. By that I mean we need to resist the tendencies that we have to live for ourselves and to be selfish. We see many people doing exactly that, hoarding. Other people aren't taking this seriously and uh, they're having corona parties and laughing about it all, not realizing that one of the ways that we can love our neighbor is to stay put in our homes and not spread this disease. And so it's important for us to resist the temptation to live out our sinful condition. So we must do in this time what people did during the Great Depression and what people did during World War II. They prayed, they trusted God, they believed that God would be faithful. And as they trusted in him, they moved forward. They kept going. They didn't allow fear to overwhelm them and destroy them. They kept putting one foot in front of the other. It kind of reminds me of a farmer, of this legend of a farmer I heard about. His mule had fallen down a well, his well. He went and looked and the mule was so far down and the well was so deep and the animal was so old and he thought out of you know, being, uh, being sympathetic to the animal's needs and being humanitarian, he thought the best thing he can do is just to, to, to end the poor thing's life. So his plan was to uh, bring his friends over with shovels and to start to bury the mule while it was alive. Well, they started pouring dirt on the poor mule and it scared the mule half to death. The mule started to become hilarious. I mean, not hilarious, but hysterical. The mule started becoming hysterical. And uh, every drop of dirt that fell on its back 
it, it caused great fear and anxiety. And then finally, finally the mule said to itself, you know what, I gotta change how I look at this. I gotta change how I look at this situation. You know what I need to do with every, with every scoop of dirt that falls on me, every shovel of dirt that falls on me? I, I've gotta shake it off and step up. And that's what he started to do. He would shake it off and step up, shake it off and step up, shake it off and step up. And the mule would say that. I gotta shake it off and step up, shake it off and step up. And pretty soon, the mule, well, it was at ground level and just stepped over the tiny wall and was free. I think that's what we have to do. Shake it off and step up. We know that we can be gripped by fear. We know that we can be gripped by anxiety. We can become a slave of worry, but we gotta shake it off and step up and trust that God is in charge and that God is in control. We need to seek out Christian community. The fact that we're having such a hard time disengaging from one another is another sign that we were created by God to be in community. We were not meant for isolation and we were meant for Christian community where the values of Christian faith bind us together. And so reach out to one another in the family of God at Mount of Olives. Phone, make phone calls to one another, talk to each other by phone. Uh, use our Facebook account and, and talk to one another and uh, reach out. In fact, one of our small groups recently had a virtual gathering on a Friday night and they supported one another just as they would if they were, could really be present. And so allow community to strengthen you as well. If you have a need, email, and we will pray for your need as well. But you know, God's word has a word of encouragement for us today. We've been in the Gospel of John in our Lenten time as we prepare for Easter. We've been in the Gospel of John, and I wanna move a little bit ahead outside of the schedule and look at a passage that can give us hope today. I want to look with you at John chapter 16 and particularly at verse 33 because in the gospel of John chapter 16, the Lord Jesus is preparing his disciples for difficult times. He's preparing them for the cross. He's preparing them for the cross and he tells them that hard times are coming, challenging times are coming. And when they hear him speak about this, they say to him, now you are not speaking in in picture language, you are speaking in language we can understand. You see, most of Jesus' ministry, he, he spoke in parables, but now he was being very direct about what was to come. Challenge and difficulty was going to be coming. And he wanted them prepared, he wanted them ready. And now look at verse 33, in what Jesus said to his disciples, and what he's saying to you, his disciple today. In verse 33 of chapter 16, it says, I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. He begins by saying, I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. You see, that's where our peace comes from. It comes from Jesus Christ. You don't find peace by trusting in yourself. We don't find peace by trusting in others. We don't find peace by trusting in the, the uh, mighty dollar or the strength even of our nation. Ultimately, we find our peace in Jesus Christ. And then he says here, in the world, you will face persecution. And the word here that's in the original language is another word that could say anguish. Another translation could be anguish. In the world, you will face anguish. You know, I'm fully aware of the fact that the coronavirus is causing a tremendous amount of anguish for a lot of people, millions of people. But I also recognize that there are many of you watching this service today who have been in anguish long before the coronavirus showed up. Many of you have been dealing with cancer, months worth of cancer or years, and you've been in anguish. You've been suffering from pain and worry and anxiety it's been a hard, tough battle. And then I know many others have had death in their family. They've lost loved ones. We've had so many funerals of late. And I know the anguish and the pain that it has brought into the, the lives of many. Many of our men have lost their wives. There's been so many sad tragedies of death. And then I know that people suffer in all sorts of ways with depression, 
uh, mental health issues, addiction, on and on the list goes of the challenges that people face without the coronavirus. And so I'm well aware that many people are in anguish for a variety of reasons. And Jesus says, this is our world, I'm afraid. This is the world, the broken world in which we live. He didn't create this, but it's a result of sin and brokenness. And so we live in that type of world. But he says, be of courage. Did you see that? He says, be of courage. You and I can be a people of courage. We don't have to be in captivity to fear and anxiety. We don't have to be slaves to worry. We can be a courageous people. We can be people of faith. We can be people of hope. He says, be of courage. And you know why we can be a courageous people? We can be a courageous people because of what he says next. He says, but take courage. I have conquered the world. I have conquered the world. Another translation says, I have overcome the world. You see, what Jesus is telling his disciples, even before the cross and the resurrection is this, the world's going to throw at me everything they've got. They're going to try to destroy me. They think they will have destroyed me. But their worst will never destroy me. I'm greater than all of that. And I'm going to be victorious over that. I'm going to be victorious over sin and death I am going to be victorious for I will conquer the grave and my victory will be your victory. And no matter what the world throws at you, my victory will be your victory. And you see, because Jesus conquered death in the grave, because he rose from the dead, it's a game changer. It means that you and I will not be destroyed. It means you and I will not be forgotten. It means you and I will, will be able to march on and be courageous people and people of faith and people of hope. I read the story about a 85-year-old grandmother who, who uh, never called her family for any help. Oh, they would get together and have good times, but she'd never ask for any help. And then one morning she called her oldest son and said, you've got to come over, I need your help. Well, he was, he was very concerned and he rushed over and he said, what's wrong, mom? And she said, well, I think I got a burglar in the house. In fact, I think the burglar's in the closet. He said, why didn't you call me last night? I could have come over. She said, oh no, it was late and I didn't want to bother you. And so what I did was I nailed the closet shut. <laughs> and then I went to bed and fell asleep. I nailed the closet shut and went to sleep. You see, that's a courageous outlook. You and I need to have that kind of outlook. And we can have that kind of expression and outlook because Jesus has conquered the grave, because he has overcome the world. We can be people of courage and we can nail shut the closet of anxiety and worry and go to bed and rest and have our sleep, trusting in a loving God who is not gonna walk away from us, who hasn't forgotten us, who knows you by name, who loves you more than anyone has ever loved you. He hasn't forgotten you. And he promises to walk with you and me and our families through this time. You know, many times I've said to you that God gets the last word and that God is able to take bad things and turn them into something good. He does it all the time. And so that's what I want to focus on as we close today. I want you to begin thinking about, praying about, anticipating, looking for, how God is going to take this bad situation and turn it into something good. I think we're going to look back in time and we're, we're, it's very possible. We may look back and say, that was the moment. That was the moment when God changed the world. And now people look to him. They don't rely on their own strength and ability. They look to him. That was the moment when people relied on God. That was the moment when people changed their priorities and their values and trusted him and started having God-centered values. That was the time when families started to care for each other, spend more time with each other. That was the time when we became a more loving and caring people. God's not done. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? Because 
He is able to take bad things and turn them into something good. So going forward, you pray. Pray and trust God. Rely on him, knowing that he is going to see you through. And you can be courageous, for he has overcome the world. And so pray, trust God, and wash your hands. Wash your hands. And know that he's not finished. He's going to do mighty things. Pray. And know that you're going to make it through. You're going to make it through. It's going to be okay. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today that you are almighty and everlasting. And through the cross of Jesus, you prove to us that you are not a throwaway God, that you redeem your lost creation, that you aren't done, you haven't walked away from us, but that you are going to provide a way. You're going to provide a way when there seems to be no way. And you're going to walk with us through every step. So be with us, O oh God, and give us strength and give us courage and give us that peace which passes all human comprehension. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and be with you. Be of courage. When morning gives the sky Sing, shout.